All right, in this video, let's take a look at the Bontrager Solstice MIPS helmet. Purchase the medium large size because there is no medium. It's just small, medium, or medium large. There are a variety of sizes on the size chart up here. And the medium large fits right here. I have a helmet size or hat size of size seven. So this is six and three eighths through seven and a quarter or six and seven eighths through seven and five eighths for baseball cap sizes. It does specifically say it's not intended for extreme off-road riding or for motorized vehicles. On the top, there's not much. On the sides, there's nothing either. Just a little Bontrager since 1980. The back, nothing. And this is the other side. Again, on the bottom was the chart that we just looked at. Let's go ahead and take a look at the helmet. There's a little information on a donation on the inside lip. And also here, just the inside of the box with some crash replacement guarantee wording. There's also a owner's manual and it looks like there's some emergency information on a sticker that you could attach to the inside of your helmet if you'd like. So this green is the same green that you see construction workers wear. It's quite bright or the safety reflective jackets that cyclists often wear. And it does indicate MIPS down here, multi-directional impact protection system. Something a little rough edge over here on the back. And it does feel a little heavier than a typical road helmet. So I'll go weigh it later. And we're gonna also look at the inside and look at the MIPS. I have a Bontrager Spectre Wave Cell in addition to this one, and it also comes with this, I believe, a clasp that's magnetic. So I think you just put it over here, and it snaps on. And it's, so you pull it off, and then it just snaps on on its own and locks it in place. With my Spectre, I'm not the biggest fan of this because it's magnetic. There's extra weight to it. So if the straps aren't on, at the ideal location and you're riding and hit bumps it could hit your throat and you'll feel that extra weight initially looking at this inside and the MIPS system it looks pretty good the connection right here that holds it it's underneath a pad you might want to put tape or do something with that so it doesn't pinch your hair but it's not showing so the connections are either behind or they are hidden. So you won't get your hair pinched as much as if they were on other helmets. So let me go back and forth and see. It moves around a little this way and it'll also move side to side. So looks fairly nice. Bontrager lists this at 375 grams. Payment system on the rear seems to be fairly modern. You just turn it one direction to tighten it and turn it the other way to loosen it. So from the top view, as you see when you turn it, this is getting closer inward, more tight. And then as I loosen it, it comes all the way out further. Taking a look at the visor here, it's not that long. I'm gonna say it's like three quarters of an inch or maybe one and a half centimeters that's sticking out. So I guess it's good if you have like a hybrid bike on the road bike, I typically don't like visors at all, but when I'm on the recumbent, I definitely want to have a visor. So that's why I got this for a recumbent bike to shield the sun out because I'm leaning back so far. Including the rear vents, there are a total of 17 vents or air openings on this helmet. So included, connected to the helmet was information on the MIPS helmet this information might be able to be found online, but just some information on it. Bond trigger calls the clasp a fid lock. I'm not the biggest fan of this fid lock. Bond trigger claimed that it was 375 grams, but on my scale it's coming in at 385 grams. 
I mentioned before, I typically wear a medium size helmet in Bontrager and Gyro or Giro. And let's see how this Bontrager Solstice MIPS helmet fits. Hmm. Initially it fits, feels real good, real comfortable. Pretty nice. I'm tightening it in the back here. And right here might go a little bit low. So let me go grab my glasses and see how that works out. So if you like to ride with sunglasses, let me see how low it is. And it looks like it doesn't interfere too much. I can move my glasses in and out quite a bit. And also if you like to put your glasses over the straps, I'll put them over the straps. Seems like, okay, as you can tell, this back part area hits the uh, glasses. So it's kind of a little low, but again, my helmet, my head size is a medium and this is a medium large so it's probably a little longer and goes down to the side a little bit and hits here on the side of the glasses a little bit. So as the pamphlet mentioned earlier there's a one-handed removal for the strap. I think you could just grab here and push and then the strap could be removed. However putting it on one hand it's a little more tricky. I don't think I could yeah I don't think I could do it. No. At MSRP of only 65 US dollars, this Bontrager Solstice isn't too bad of an option. I'm going to be comparing it also to the Spectre Wave Cell and then also I have a Bontrager Ballista MIPS helmet. So this one's 65 MSRP, this one's about 150 and the MSRP of the Bontrager Ballista MIPS is approximately 200 US dollars. On trigger Spectre Wave Cell comes in at 363 grams, which is comparably relatively similar, and the Bond Trigger Ballista significantly lighter, in my opinion, at 294 grams. It's a little hard to weigh that metal clasp with the magnets, but it's probably about a little under 30 grams, so my CEO is coming in about 31 grams. And the standard buckle with my tape on it is probably a little under 15 grams, so it does make a, quite a bit of difference. And also when I'm going over bumps and this thing, this part here, since it's lighter, hits my neck, doesn't bug me as much. However, the metal part, the magnets of the wave cell and the Bontrager solstice kind of irritate me a little bit when this bounces around and if it were to hit my neck because it weighs a little bit more. One thing that's significantly different that you may have noticed is these are reflective, the straps. So on this side, the inside, and the outside is reflective. However, when you go to the higher end helmets, they're just typically black or highlight yellow, as you can see in the ballista here. And they don't have this reflective coating, which I think is real nice if you're gonna do any night riding. It makes you a little more visible. So oh, measuring my head comes out to be about 21 inches or 55 centimeters. That puts me right at a size medium for the sizing chart. Another measurement that's not really measured is from around your ears to see how tall your head is, I guess. And that comes in at 25 centimeters on this measurement. At 27 centimeters, keep in mind how it fits right on my head. The helmet's all the way down right now. And if I put glasses on, it might hit right here a little bit. However, it hasn't bothered me so far. It's not too obnoxious having this helmet sits so low on my head. Well, it's actually not too low. It's not too bad at all. Just have to get used to it a little bit or put your glasses on the outside of the straps here. So for this medium large, look at the side to side movement. I could probably barely stick a uh, pinky in here. So the fit from side to side is pretty good. And the fore and aft, the front and back, you could always tighten it with the uh, strap here and tighten it so it's actually quite firm and it grabs my head fairly well. So my again, my head size is 55, so I'm right at the lower limit of the medium large here, or actually at the upper end of the small medium. So I'm actually glad I went with the medium large because it seems to fit real well. Okay, so let me get the measurements of this medium large helmet. And across here ends up being about 16 and a half centimeters, or roughly six and a half inches from side to side. Front to back, I've loosened this all the way and from back here to the front of the helmet ends up being about 21 centimeters or approximately eight and a half inches. The medium helmet is about a quarter of a centimeter less in width from 16 and a half down to about 16.25 and front to back the medium helmet 
comes in all the way stretched out at about 20.5 centimeters. So again, about half a centimeter, roughly half a centimeter shorter. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this one all the way to make it as tight as I can to see, there we go, about right there to see the length here, how much it changed. So this drops it down all the way shortened down to approximately 18 and a half centimeters from front to back. Now let's go ahead and take a look at this visor. The reason I bought this is because it comes with a visor and I want to take a look at this and it looks initially like it's real short. Looking top down on the visor, it looks like this is much shorter than this gyro or gyro phase helmet here to the right. Once you flip it over, however, there looks like another story to be told. The front of the Bontrager is quite a bit larger, there's a lot more styrofoam up here compared to this helmet. So let's go get some measurements. From the front here, where you put your head, it's about five and a half centimeters from the very front to the end of the visor here. This mountain bike specific helmet is six and a half centimeters, so another centimeter longer. Across the top here is about 14 and a half centimeters. Mountain bike helmet also is about 14 and a half centimeters across, so it should get about the same amount of sun coverage on this helmet as well from side to side. Just put this on and when I'm looking for, like my eyes are facing downward, I see this bright highlight yellow. So I believe if you don't want this glare, like glare off the road, hitting this and having this bright yellow in your eyes while you're looking upward to go ahead and put some black electrical tape over here so you prevent some of the glare there. I was using this as gray and it's not that glossy. There wasn't any major reflection or too, too much bright stuff in my eye. Also one thing to note is the Spectre here has a kind of glossy finish to the paint. It's real shiny and glossy whereas the other Solstice helmet is more of a matte highlight yellow. So if you like this matte color versus a high gloss, that's just up to you on terms of color preference. Also the Spectre, you're going to have in the back these boa dials, which might be a little stronger. It might be kind of like a wire back here versus the other helmet. The Solstice, as you can see, is just plastic and eventually because it's real thin here it may break over time so if you have it real tight and crank this all the way down it's just plastic and this part could break and once this part breaks then i believe that's the end of your helmet i don't think this whole thing is replaceable it is clipped in or snapped in right here so you might be able to get a replacement if you do eventually break it however if it takes a year or two years or a little longer than that. This helmet is only $65 MSRP and that's how much I paid for it. So you might be better off if the helmet's old just to go ahead and get a whole new one if it's a few years down the line. Ventilation wise, the wave cell in my opinion does not ventilate as well as having the open hole channels for the air to flow through. This blocks some of the air and if you're looking straight on, you see the air would hit this and kind of go up and over. And how often do you ride, unless you put your head all the way down, does the air come in from the top of the helmet? So the air would have to come in. You'd have to put your head down the, pretty low for the air to come in this direction. But if you're riding casually and your helmet's flat with the horizon, the air would probably hit this wave cell and go over. A little hard to see, but as you can tell underneath here, I could stick my finger underneath here. So the air could come in here over the top of your head if you have short hair and flow out the back to cool the top of your head. So the channeling for air direction and flow for the Solstice helmet looks to be pretty good. If you ride in an area with a lot of bugs, this Bontrager wave cell has actually prevented a few bees from entering my head. They've hit here and kind of bounced off. Whereas over on my other helmet, like the Bontrager Ballista, I've actually had a bee fly in one of these and sting me right on the forehead. I mentioned earlier about the airflow going through. If you go with a wave cell, there aren't the channels for the air to come in and exit out the back. So this helmet, the wave cell does get hotter. And for a helmet that costs more than twice as much as the standard MIPS helmet, it is quite a bit hotter. One other thing to note is night riding. If you want to go ahead and mount a light on top of this helmet, it's going to be a lot easier to fit through the holes here. So you haven't already seen it, I did an unboxing or review of this Cat Eye Bolt, but it does mount very beautifully over this Bontrager Solstice helmet. 
it's pretty easy to stick the strap through, wrap it around, and mount it on the inside of the helmet here. Whereas if you were to go with a wave cell type helmet, it's a lot harder to mount and takes a little more time and there's just not that much space to get the straps in. Also with the reflective bands here, it's also gonna be nicer to ride at night too. So looking in the back here, it looks like there's probably a little more protection as in it's just a little larger, so it may protect lower on your head as well. But it is a medium large and this one on the right, the Spectre is a medium. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you did enjoy my review and unboxing of this Bontrager Solstice Mountain Bike MIPS helmet. If you want to see more, go ahead and subscribe below if you haven't already. And please hit that thumbs up if you did like this video. If you have any questions, also feel free to let me know in the comments section below. That should be open. I'll try to get back to you if I can. Also, thank you so much for watching. Really appreciate it and have a most wonderful day.